All right, so today's video is about what's called case. And I'd like you to start by copying out this whole chart right here and make sure to get all of the titles for the rows and the columns. This chart can be found on 139. All right, so um, what we're studying today is why sometimes you use a pronoun like I and sometimes you use a pronoun like me. And sometimes you use a pronoun like he, and other times you use a pronoun like him. And then these plural pronouns also have two versions. And there's even a third version over here called the possessive case, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, here's the rule. The nominative case is for subjects and predicate nominatives. The objective case is for everything else. The objective case would include direct objects, indirect objects, and objects of a preposition. Let's go ahead and move on to the first rule. The first rule here is about the nominative case. Um, the nominative case. The personal pronouns in the nominative, I, you, he, she, it, we, and they, are used as subjects of verbs and as predicate nominatives. So here are two examples of subjects. They are, use the word they, you would never say them are, and we think. You would never say us think. Similarly, we wouldn't say she, uh, her deserves. So we should say she deserves. And you won't mess this up. Usually you'll get this right. You will uh, be able to trust your ears that the nominative case sounds better for subjects. Here's where it gets tricky. Um, predicate nominatives. A predicate nominative is a noun or a pronoun after a linking verb. And you have to use words in the nominative case for a predicate nominative. So here's the example. The first speaker will be I. I'll bet you the word me sounds better to you, but that's not right. We have to use I because this is a pronoun after a linking verb. The first speaker will equal I. And the rule is you have to use a pronoun in the nominative case. And I'll prove that I is in the nominative case. Take a look at that chart right here. I nominative. Me is objective, which is not allowed. Moving on. Here's the other example. The most polite person in class is he. Not him, he. This is the nominative case. It's after a linking verb. We can put equal sign over this verb. The most polite person in class equals he, and that's correct. Let's do the exercise below. So, um, below, um, we have to choose the nominative pronoun that belongs here. Mike here is a boy, and he's the subject of tied, and, uh, or are tied, and so we'll use the nominative pronoun for boy, and that is he. And number two, Donna, and her parents have moved. Donna's a subject, Donna's a girl, uh, so we're going to use the nominative pronoun she. Number three, first person plural. Well, what the heck is that? Let's take a look at the chart. So if you look up here, we have our singular nominative pronouns, and then below we have our plural nominative pronouns. So first person, plural, nominative, we. There it is, we. So anyway, first person, plural, we. Uh, and that's the subject of will take. Number four, can it be those choir members in that picture? Well, here we have a plural group and it is a predicate nominative of the linking verb be, so we're going to say they, which is the plural uh, third-person pronoun. Five, either Ellen or Sally will be. So here we have our subjects, and uh, Sally's a girl, so the nominative pronoun for a girl is she. Six, Jennifer and second-person singular. What the heck is that? What is second-person singular nominative? Second-person singular, nominative, you. Notice that you doesn't change between the nominative and the objective case. You is just you. Anyway, um, second person singular, you. Uh, seven, first person plural. We've already seen this before. We saw it up here, first person plural. We know that that's we. We earned our trophies. Number eight, neither Carolyn nor Michelle has change for the bus. Carolyn's a girl. She's the subject of has change. That's, first, that's a third person singular feminine, and that's the word she. 
And number nine, did you know that Greg and first person singular are leaving? What's first person singular? So here's our list. First person, singular, nominative, I. So the answer here is, did you know that Greg and I are leaving? Ten. I am sure the ones on the dance floor were you and Ed. Uh, this is a predicate nominative to the linking verb were, so we're going to use the word he, which is the nominative pronoun for a boy. Try the rest on your own. Make sure to pick pronouns only from that first list. All right, so next up we have the objective case. Now, the objective case is what you use for objects, and there are several types, um, and those are uh, indirect objects, direct objects, and objects of prepositions. So here we go. A direct object should be in the objective case. Here we have a direct object. Carmen has invited me. Uh, this is the verb. Uh, me receives the invitation, so that's receiving the action. So we would use the objective case from that second column. Uh, the kittens were asleep until sudden nose noise woke them. Wake is the verb. Them receives the action. Them is from that second list. All right, uh, and you can also have compound. You can have two direct objects in a row joined by a conjunction like hand. All right, next, 6D. So an indirect object uh, should be in the objective case. So here's an indirect object. Here we have uncle, bought, him, a poncho. Uncle's the subject, bought is the verb, poncho's the direct object, him benefits from buying that poncho. So here's an example of that move on. Um, oh, and you can have more than one indirect object. All right, so um, let's look at exercise two. So what you have to do in exercise two is make sure to choose pronouns from the objective list. Um, did you tell the superintendent or Ms. Marshall? Um, this is the direct object of the verb tell, so we need to use an objective pronoun. So we're going to say an, the objective pronoun for a female is her. Two, Mrs. Hank gave Josh and first person plural the motivation we needed. Well, what is first person plural objective? This is an indirect object here. Well, first person plural objective, us. So we're going to say us on that one. So... Um, Miss Hanks gave Josh and us. Number five, did you see Lois or Andy today? Um, this is the direct object of C. Andy's a boy, and the objective case for direct objects here is him for a boy. Um, oh, I, I skipped one. Number three, leave, uh, first person plural. Um, alone, that's us. I screwed this up. I'm sorry about that. Uh, number four here is Carmen will be inviting both you and first person singular. This is um, 